Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. The program that you've all been waiting for, the team of seven of G is in place now, and we are going to get some really interesting stuff about all these people from Elmer Yuan. By the way, Elmer is very happy, and he'll explain to us why he is very happy about the turn of events. He'll also take a guess at. What happened in that conversation, and why Hu Jintao was not given any papers about who were going to be in the committee? All that and more. Elmer, Namaskar, and welcome to P Guru's channel. Thank you for inviting me, Sri. And uh, nice, nice seeing you. I'm not sure what time you are in India, but anyway, uh, enjoy talking to you. Um, Thank you I so had, much. Uh, I had the two. Uh, I, I, I think uh, uh, Shuri invited me two times to speak in the last two weeks. Um, uh, one is about his house arrest after his uh, trip to Ubiskistan, Ubis and uh, Ooh, yeah. uh, so he was away for disappeared for almost ten days. And uh, we, I suspect, he was under house arrest, and uh, um, and at least he was confronted by his his opponents, including the Jiang, the Shanghai Gang, and including the League Communist League Gang. All right, there. Three gangs right now: Xi Jinping gang, which is the actually the weakest at that time, and then the uh, Wu Jintao's gang, which is the leak, and then Jiang Zemin's uh, gang, which are the Shanghai gang. All right, so they are, these are the three groups of uh, family, <laughs> family or whatever, uh, fighting for power, and it's been very, very fierce. It never stopped. They have never stopped. So in the beginning. Uh, um, uh, I mean, from at the time when he was kind of out under house arrest, he ganged up. He ganged up. Xi Jinping ganged up with Hu Jintao. The guy was invited out with his group, the League Communist League. Communists train all the young people all the way until they become officials, government officials. So he ganged up with them and pushed out the uh, the uh, Shanghai gang. This is very typical. I'm sure in India you have in historically you have many many yes. such story. Two weaker one get together and push the number one out, and that's one crossing. All right, that one cross, <laughs> and then after he succeeded in that, then he started the double cross, which means he can now push Wu Jintao out, and he used some very very um, very very primitive. And uh, rough uh, 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 skill, which means uh, uh, when they when he originally he promised them that Li Keqing can become the party secretary, Wang Yang can become the prime minister, and everything he promised whatever he wants. But during the um, during the uh, during the twentieth uh, Congress, they have discussions, different province, different district, every region. And come up with a list, all right, of the central standing committee member. Central standing committee member. It's about about uh, two hundred and nine, supposedly uh, up and down field. Sometimes varies, and that list. So everybody feels comfortable. There's such a list, and uh, Wu Jintao feels comfortable that uh, his people, uh, Li Keqiang, Wang Yang, everybody on the list. So it was kind of waiting for the voting. All right, waiting for the voting. <laughs> this is unbelievable. At the voting, <laughs> the list changed to all Xi Jinping's people, almost except one. Almost everybody, none of the league people were in it. Jiang people never attended. They got so pissed. So Jiang Zemin, Zhu Yongqi, and his two other two colleagues, the Shanghai Gang, didn't even want to attend. They 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 were squeezed out before the meeting. So. So now it's the closing ceremony. Expect the voting to pass the slate of uh, central committee members, central about two hundred. And what happened during the scene, which I think the whole world was broadcasting, the longest uh, video was about three minutes, done by the Singapore reporters. Their shorter ones, two minutes. The uh, all the foreign press just came in to film, to video. The voting and the last most important part, the uh, the, the when they were deciding which one to be the, the the candidate, that was not ever shown. 
So when to come to, to show unity, <laughs> they were invited in. That's when Wu Jingtao started to say, can I look at the list? There was, everybody has a file. He said, can I look at the list? And then the man next to him, his name is uh, Li, L, uh, it's uh, pronounced as you the guy who went to uh, another bus stop for really very close. Uh, in the last uh, plan, last uh, Congress, he was the Congress, chairman of the Congress, all right, sitting next to Wu Jingtao, sitting to the left of Wu Jingtao, stop him from looking at the list. All right? <laughs> he said, I'm looking at the list. He's supposed to be the past president and the past uh, secretary of uh, Se general secretary of the Communist Party. He wants to look at this, and uh, the guy said, "Put his hand on it." So please don't look at it. This and that. Just trust, trust the party. So he insists on looking at the list, and already got into some kind of uh, struggle. And uh, Xi Jinping looked to the, his left, and then asked his bodyguard to come. And the bodyguard came and uh, somehow got hold of the file. The list gone back to the, to the, to the file. So he, got, took a, he never allowed him to carry the list. And, uh, and the Wu Jingtao was sitting next to, to uh, Xi Jinping. And Xi Jinping has another list between him and uh, Xi Jinping. There's another list. So Wu said, Wu wants to point to that list and ask Xi Jinping, how come? How come this list is not what we have agreed on, All right? And uh, Xi Jinping understood that uh, it's going to be a scene. And by that time, all the foreign media were already, all their cameras already start uh, video. That's why the Singapore one, the, those Singaporeans are very diligent, turn on their camera first. So they, had, they got the longest video. So Xi Jinping put his hand on that paper. That I list. saw that. Yeah. yeah, you saw that. And it refused to get it. So in the end, they have to carry him by force, all right? And then uh, uh, to get, and the fire was in the guard's hand and accompany him out. And, uh, and uh, before he left, he, he basically touched on Xi Jinping's back and say a few words. And then also he passed Li Keqiang and then he also tapped on his shoulder and say a few words. And then he walked all by himself, of course, with somebody, you know, Twisting his arm <laughs> out of the out of thing, and never heard from him. The communist explanation is he had a health problem, which is really uh, far from the. You, if anybody look at the, that list, that uh, video would understand he was far from reluctant to leave, and he was struggling to the, his left to get from his own list. And failing to do that, he was trying to get hold of Xi Jinping's list. So it's obvious the focus is on that piece of paper where the list of the uh, candidate and waiting to have a general wave of hand of everybody pass. So in the end, of course, he was removed. Yet the result of the voting is still unanimous. Zero objection. And during that time, I think I explained, there were several other uh, uh, League people like uh, Wen Jiabao, which is the previous prime minister, also raised yes. his hand, wants to talk. Several people wants to talk, but their mic, their microphone, including Wu Jingtao's microphone, was shut off. So that's why we don't hear anything uh, from them. So obviously, uh, it's a coup. It's a coup. Xi Jinping has have have <laughs> one more coup, uh, really by doing this type of thing last minute last minute uh and really come up with his own list all his own people only one person belong to the league is Wu Chen Hua Wu Chen Hua and uh, well, after he saw this he said I resign because uh Wu Jingtao was really the headmaster of the party the the party has a school it's the it's called the, really the party university Wu Jingtao used to be the headmaster and everybody has to go from time to time. They have to go through and have their brain washed. So anyway, so he, uh, Wu, Wu, Wu Chenhua was was tipped to be the prime minister or the next person, Nick, lower than the prime minister. He said, I don't want to have anything to do with it. So he resigned. In the end, the Politburo supposed a total of 25 members. And it ended up with 24 because he left. 
and then uh, Xi Jinping couldn't force him to stay. And then the 24 members elected the standing committee meeting, which is 100% uh, uh, Xi Jinping's uh, confident. All right, that's 100%. And uh, every one of them, none of them were from the Shanghai League or from the uh, uh, from the Shanghai Shanghai Gang or from the League. So a couple of things, uh, Elmer. First off, for the viewers, please like this video. This is the best put together story that I have seen. I know Elmer for a long time. And, and not everything that we take a guess at is going to come out right. We were always saying, you know, we think. That's why we are qualifying and, you know, we're prefixing, prefacing all our statements with we think. But this is the best explanation I've seen thus far. And it makes sense. This man has his own folder. He has a different list and he wants to see, he knows by that time, Hu Jintao knows that this guy has snuck up on him and he has double crossed him a second time in the terms of the people who are going to be selected. Now, the, the bigger question that needs to be asked, Elmer, is why did Hu Jintao side with Xi Jinping? Why not with the Shanghai gang? Yes, Shanghai gang was, has been very, uh, very rough on him. During his presidency, his 10 years, Shanghai Gang basically keep on interfering with his uh, rule. And, uh, and uh, Zhang never give up on his chairmanship of the military. Never he, give up. Uh, he was always, you know, moving and, the uh, levers. He, and the Zhang, the because he's so powerful, the Shanghai Gang are the very corrupted ones. To be honest with you, Hu Jintao and Wen Jiapao are, were not corrupt. corrupt. But they have no choice but to allow the young people to become multi multi billionaires. All these uh, Jack Ma and uh, Tenzin and everybody, their backers they are the young family. All right. Imagine, let's just imagine one thing. If you use WeChat, you can transfer money, you can shop, you can buy things. All right. You have a wallet, WeChat. And also the Alibaba, which is uh, called the Alipay. Also, you have a payment system. That payment system, basically, they go to your bank account. Any bank, you can bank with anybody, all right, in the world. They actually go into a bank account, take money out, and pay, pay the merchant when you do one transaction. This is what happened. For a new company like uh, Jack Ma's Alibaba and for Tanshin's, uh, uh, for, for, uh, uh, for Tanshin, the uh, WeChat Pay, to tap into the bank and get money out 24 hours, anytime. Even when the bank is closed, they can go in and take money out. This requires tremendous power because you understand which bank in the world would allow you to anytime, 24 hours a day, to tap into your account and take money out and pay the merchant when you shop something. This is a tremendous, this is why people don't understand. It's never been done, all right? Even even uh, Amazon, you buy something, you have to buy through a credit card. And the credit card has some kind of authorization. Right? The sanctity but, of the bank has been completely smeared. Completely can smeared. you imagine? That's why they were so powerful and rich. We chat, of course, we, you, you guys in India have, uh, have used them. And then Alibaba, you may not have used them, but they have done a tremendous business because they are able to pay for you any time of the day from your own bank account. This is a tremendous uh, 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 power. And this all comes from the Shanghai, from the Jiang family. So almost every successful business, they control the three mobile phone operator. Jiang's son, or right, Jiang Mianheng, control all the three. Can you imagine if you have only one Mobile phone op operator, you become look at the Mexico guy. He's the richest person in the world. He only is one one of the, the several operator. Carlos China Lynn. is yeah. the biggest mobile phone country in the world with over one billion users, and all controlled by three company. And all these three company is controlled by Zhang's son. You, can you imagine? I don't even want to go into other things. Just. Just we everybody understand mobile iPhone, and it's not the Apple is not the one make the biggest money. It's the mobile phone company that every month gets something, and whenever you use this app and they, that app, they make money. It's the operator that makes most money, not Apple. Apple because it's they happen to make the best phone, so they, you think they are the richest? No, 
these mobile phone companies, the operator, are the richest company in the world because every month you are paying them 10, 20, 30 US dollars. I pay, of course, more, $100. <laughs> I pay a lot more. Um, Elmer, so I now understand why he sided, leak sided with Xi Jinping. Yeah, but to, to push, push, push the Shanghai Gang out. Shanghai Gang is so powerful. Hong Kong, for instance, Hong Kong is controlled by the Shanghai Gang. All right, the entire Hong Kong. So even Li Keqing, our the richest man in Asia, basically he is the white glove for the Jiang family. And Tamasic, Tamasic, I'm not, I'm not kidding. Uh, the the Singapore uh, state company, right, makes a lot of money. They are holding asset for the Jiang family. One second, I'm not able to hear you. Just one second. Okay. Are you able to hear me? Yeah, I yeah, can I hear, can you, hear you very well. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, yeah. repeat, yeah. the Zhang family is so powerful. I'm sure Singapore people understand Tamasic in Singapore. Yes, Tamasic, Olympics. yeah. Tamasic, anything China wants to do outside China, Tamasic and the uh, chairman, He Jing, was uh, Li Guangyu's uh, daughter-in-law. She is the white glove, all right, for China. They're very clever, Singapore. You know, militarily, they align with the U.S. Business-wise, they align with China. <laughs> Is it very clever? It's something that Singapore should uh, consider. I mean, militarily, U.S. is the only safe bet for the time being. Well, they are running with the hares and hunting with the hounds, and that's a very dangerous policy. Um, mm -hmm. Elmer, um, I'm going to put up the pictures of the seven people. First one, of course, is she. Uh, let's let's take a look at it and tell us what you think about each one of these people. What are their you know uh, um, strengths and weaknesses? Let's start with Xi Jinping. Clearly, he has managed to double cross his own boss, his own mentor, who point, put him in that place. Uh, talk to us a little bit about that. How we we, I've, we have covered this in the past. Just one two minutes. How did Xi Jinping become the general secretary in two thousand twelve? First of all, Xi Jinping, you have to believe me, and you have to check his record. His uh, education is primary five, grade five. And then the uh, Cultural Revolution starts. Everything after that is fake, not study. And this whole generation, this, all these seven Politburo members, standing committee bureau members, are all, none of them are well educated. They were all from these kind of uh, red guard. Let's call them the Red Guard Cabinet. This is the Red Guard Cabinet. When they were kids, when they were young, in their teens, they were all Red Guards, right? So the Red Guards, they basically destroyed China, 90% of Chinese, China's four or 5,000 years of culture. Go ahead, sorry. Just give me one second, one second. It's R-E-D-G-U-A-R-D-S, right? Red, Red Guards. Guards. Red Guards, Guards right? Okay, right. please continue. Please continue. Red guard yeah. was the Mao Zedong when he want he want to fight the bureaucrats. All right, he basically uh, uh, asked all the students to stop all the school for ten years. All the schools, including kindergarten, all the way to university, stop for ten years. And he used the red guards basically to took care of all his political enemies. Going back to Xi Jinping, he is the gang leader. At that time, he was not successful. He, so he has a compress. And all these people, their education in their teens is how Mao did his, how fight his enemies uh, using this kind of dirty tactics, uh, torture, murder, you name it. So basically, Mao was able to kill all his enemy through cultural revolution. So all these, the, uh, these seven guys, including Xi Jinping, were from that generation and he can identify with them. That's why Xi Jinping never hates uh, Li, Keqiang, Li, Ke, Li Keqiang because he's from Peking University, like the Ivy League people, you know, well-educated doctor of economics. He hates this kind of guys. He wants to have pe people who will listen to him. And he thinks he is the greatest. Education means nothing to him. So this is Xi Jinping. And uh, you want me to tell how, how he got the power? This guy, yes, yes. his only only talent is ass kissing. He's damn good. He's really good. He has never achieved anything. If you look through his record, he's never done anything. But throughout his life, he has been kissing us. But one thing, I know his, his father, he 
His father was a reformist, true reformist, after 16 years of prison, was one of, uh, uh, again, fighting with Mao, even before in the 50s, and got six, 16 years of, of, uh, of uh, jail. But anyway, people respect his father. So if they consider him as a descendant of a uh, revolutionary, so his father. So this is one of the reasons to let him be one of the candidate. And uh, he 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 be, he was the he was the um, head of uh, Fujian province, the province opposite to Taiwan, for almost uh, two terms or like uh, over ten years, and then the uh, the head of Zhejiang province, which is the one north of Fujian, uh, 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 south of Shanghai, and the last five years he was the party secretary for Shanghai. None of these places is his origin. He is from very north, northwest of China. This is where the Emperor Qin, the one who built the Great Wall, unified China and make China into one country, Emperor Qin, that is their ancestry. Those people are very determined, very tough people, or very tough people, and kind of with Mongolian blood. All right, This is almost on the border with Mongolia. So. This is how he grew up. So he, through very good ass kissing, he take care of everybody. So he was picked to be a no harm uh, leader. And the Shanghai gang picked him, hope, think, thinking he can be manipulated. All right, he's, oh, he's a, he is an honest guy. <laughs> that's what they thought. And that's how, how he became, be, was picked to be the party secretary, actually for a temporary term. The guy, Bo Xilai, I don't know whether you've heard of it. Oh, I remember Bo Xilai. Yes, yes, yeah, I remember Bo Xilai. Yeah. His wife murdered the British agent, the yeah, MI6 and he, agent. All right. right. And then Bo Xilai was removed. Originally, they wanted to glow Bo Xilai to be in that position. But when the wife committed a crime at Bo Xilai, they had to do away. When Jiabao did away with him, he was the candidate for a temporary actor. Xi Jinping was a temporary actor. And uh, they are trying to figure out figure out somebody in after the first term to replace him. But then you remember there was an incident, Bo Xilai's uh, policeman, his head of police, took all the um, uh, mm -hmm. tapping, phone tapping with everybody uh, in, in China, took it to the American consulate in Qingdu. And meaning all the, all the leaders talking, they was tapped and uh, he gave it to the, uh, to the American consulate. And the American council, of course, they kept a copy uh, for the American. And the other copy, they sent it to US and Biden, Hillary gave it to Biden. Biden was in charge of China and Biden gave it to Xi Jinping. So Xi Jinping suddenly found out he was a temporary actor, <laughs> really pissed, all right? So he was, went on strike for almost uh, four weeks. No, he said, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. You guys do it. You are using me as a temporary actor. So finally, they gave him the power to a real and made him the, he agree to all his demands and make him the real secretary. That's how he was established. First five years, very quiet. All right. He was nobody. Everybody looked down on him. Uh, this guy, uh, great school education and no achievement, nothing at all. But the second term, this is in the last five years, he started getting very tough. And Hong Kong was the result of his work. He, believe it or not, you can call him a Leninist. All right, His real political belief is either a Leninist or a Stalinist. He believes in total control. And he believes in communism. Communism means... Uh, let's simplify communism. It means communism means the communists will take over all the capital of the world. Capital, including if you have a car, that's the capital. You have a bank account, you have a share of certain company, you have a house, and you use the house to collect rent, that you are a capitalist. Maybe a bit or small, that's not the point. So they want to take over all the capital from everybody. They control the capital. This is communism. Please understand. It's not just another like a democ like a Labour Party, Conservative Party. No, nothing like that. This is why the communism 
is a very serious situation. They, in, when you look at the doctrine, and if you look at the uh, Marxist uh, Marx uh, book or everything, they very simple. They have to swear, they have to take over all your capitals, meaning all your your property. This is what it is. So what Xi Jinping is going to do? He doesn't give a damn about the stock market. All right, he says that because stock market only only is a, a, a value, quantitative value of the uh, uh, quantity of your value, of of your company, of a company. But as long as the company is sitting in China, what does it matter? It's his. I mean, Elon Musk claimed, you know, oh my company, this and that, you know, uh, we are going to build a phase two and that. He forgot his company is in Shanghai. Any one minute he can he will lose it. So he is really holding it for China. Of course, he he, he feels this his. But now more and more he understands. He has to when the communists ask him to say something, he has to say it. All right? Because his future is in their hands. The biggest profit. But anyway, going back to Xi Jinping, this is what Xi Jinping is. He was able to double or triple cross. The, uh, 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 and then took his position. You, I'm sure everybody has watched the uh, watched the Godfather one, all right? You remember Al Pacino finally right. had to kill Michael. off all yeah. the other family head of families, and then get his position. Al Pacino is Xi Jinping. Thank you so much. And now let's take a quick look at the team. Uh, we've talked about Xi Jinping. Let's go to the next one, who is uh, Li Qiang. Uh, how do you say that, Li Qiang? Li Li Chang. Li Chang uh, before was the head uh, head of Shanghai. All right. Right. And uh, right. he was placed in Shanghai. He does not manage Shanghai at all. Uh, he is from my hometown, Ningpo, from Zhejiang Province. And uh, 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 but this man obviously is a a street smart, street smart. And uh, Xi Jinping originally was picking the fu, uh, 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 Hu Chunhua to be the prime minister, and Hu Chunhua said, "I don't want to have anything. You have basically arrested Hu Jintao. He doesn't. He resigned. So Li Chang took over as the prime minister. He's going to be the prime minister to to take Li Keqiang's position, and uh, he it could be very smart, but he has never handled any central government uh, uh, business. So uh, again, but." Very, very obedient, 100% obedient. He would never have been any uh, central com, um, com, government official if without uh, without uh, Xi Jinping's uh, put him there, placing him there. So he is going to be uh, the prime minister. But please understand, he does not take over from tomorrow. There are still five months before he takes over from Li Keqiang. During these five months, we are going to see tremendous power struggle, and also um, uh, Xi Jinping is going to use these guys basically to um, uh, to uh, fight and also to take over the power of the current uh, administration. The administration, there will be five months to take over administration. So this is, he has to, it's a big fight, big war to fight. Okay, so that's the first candidate. And, um, you know, Elmer, I want to uh, tell you, looking back at history, you know, remember this guy called Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, the Pakistani yes, prime minister? Yes, Pakistan, yes, yes. Yes. So he said that because I have mooted the idea of an atomic bomb and I'm going to get this thing, he said, we will eat grass and water, but we will have the bomb. Because India exploded it's in 1973, and this yes. guy said that, right? So as things were getting worse, and the army was trying to, you know, wrest control back from him, he handpicked, he skipped six or seven generals, and handpicked the one general who he thought would, you know, basically kiss the earth on which uh, Bhutto would walk. And he picked that person to be the general of the pa Pakistani army. His name was Zia ul -Huk. Yes. Guess what happened? Within 18 months, <laughs> Zia would have turned around and hanged this guy. He <laughs> hanged him. Right? So let's hope that history doesn't repeat itself in the case of Xi Jinping and Li Chan. So let's go on to the next candidate. No, no. The, with with this, this kind of uh, regime, tremendous uh, power struggle. 
All right. And uh, I think this Xi was, this general was quite friendly to China. Maybe China is uh, tired of uh, Bhutto. Yes, 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 yes. Mm. Next one is Zhao Leiji. Go ahead, sir. Zhao Leiji is uh, his hometown, belong to Xi Jinping's hometown. He built the biggest mausoleum for Xi Jinping's father. It's like a 50 football stadium. And uh, that's why, to show his loyalty, he built the biggest mausoleum for Xi Jinping's father in his uh, hometown. So very, very good in asking. So he will be in charge of the um, discipline. Discipline means uh, party discipline. So whoever does not listen or anything, he's in charge. Before, he was the, the, uh, the uh, party secretary. He was the head of the personnel. So within the party, who will be in what position in the government is decide, was decided by him not too long ago. So now he is going to be Xi Jinping's, uh, what do you call, um, uh, 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 <laughs> like like a Gestapo, you know, head of Gestapo. Forgot his name in uh, Germany, um, the Nazi. Uh, chief, go, go, like, chief, chief of staff, Goebbels, 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 Goebbels. In Gobels, the Russia, yeah. he would be the Gobel, you know, under Stalin. <laughs> Next one, please. Wang Huning. The Wang Huning is from Shanghai, all right? And uh, uh, he went to U.S. for six months. After he came back, suddenly he became the expert of U.S., <laughs> U.S., all right? That six months, he doesn't even speak English. So suddenly he became the expert. So Xi Jinping, all his U.S. policy depends on this guy. And this guy also theoretically very strong on, on, on Marxism and Leninism. So he's the one who is going, he, his, his, he was with, uh, uh, with Xi Jinping before, and he's been dictating that how China should return to communism or socialism. And uh, he's the one who is going to say, oh, we don't even need money in China. Everything become digital. We know what you, what you, what you, you just trust the bank. <laughs> There's a number. And we tell you, we control that uh, bank account. And then you don't need money because money means freedom, right? So he is going to make China into really a socialist model, uh, 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 very much like Lenin's time. Lenin actually uh, uh, did away with the money, cash, for some time, which created a chaos. <laughs> Next one is Kai Chi. Oh, he is the mayor of uh, Beijing. Mayor is really not the right word. There, there, when there's a mayor, there's always a party secretary behind him. He's the party secretary of Beijing, meaning he controls Beijing. And so far under his rule in the last 10 years, Beijing has been pretty peaceful as far as Xi Jinping is concerned, meaning they are very good in suppressing the people. And he also, the, uh, Beijing has uh, many slums. He basically, in the winter, he did away with all the slum. And it was very cruel because winter in Beijing is very cold. He basically shut down all the, using uh, bulldozers, destroy all the slums surrounding Beijing. Uh, this is about uh, seven or eight years ago, uh, very rough, but very obedient. Again, follow Xi Jinping from Fuking province. And Li, Li, Li Chang, the, the so-called the last guy, will follow Xi Jinping from, from Ningpo to Shanghai to Beijing. This is uh, Li Chang. Yeah. Okay. Let's go take a look at Ding Xuxiang. Oh, Ding Xuxiang is his, uh, um, what's the best word for it? Uh, he's in charge of all the um, Zhongnan Ha. Zhongnan Ha is an area in central Beijing where all the communist leaders will have to live within that area. All the, all the, uh, uh, like an enclave. The, enclave. Yeah. Uh, it's called Zhong Nan Hai. It's in fact a reservoir inside the Forbidden Palace. They all live around that. And uh, what happened is he's in charge of everything. What happened is, let's say Li Keqiang has a cook, has just a chef, and a clean lady, and a driver, and all this. They were all designated by this guy. Everybody's, everybody's followers are designated, are designated really higher and put it put there by this guy. He is really uh, the, we call the big housekeeper, the biggest housekeeper. 
for China. And very important, he came from Shanghai, followed Xi Jinping from Shanghai, used to be a kind of a district, uh, uh, head of a district in Shanghai, and followed Xi Jinping to China. Uh, Shanghai needs. Um, very tough. They, in fact, everybody working for, let's say, Li Keqiang or whoever, whoever is basically <laughs> surrounded by spies. I know of one of the leaders, you use his son to be a driver because he doesn't trust his driver, cannot even talk on the mobile phone in the car because the, every day they have to make report to him. Every driver, every chef, every cleaning lady, what kind of rubbish, who have you, who have you met, everything, these followers have to make a report to him. So he is aware of everything. So looks the Chinese leaders looks very good and very powerful. In fact, they were all under strict surveillance in home 24 hours a day. Very, very, if you saw that video about uh, Wu Jintao being arrested, you saw how people was kind of a really uh, stood there, didn't even turn, most of them didn't even turn their head. This is discipline. When the Chinese, uh, the discipline of the Chinese party, meaning they fear for their future, for their freedom, for their safety. Hmm. Next one is Li Xi. Li Xi is the head of uh, Guangdong province. Guangdong province is not small. Guangdong province have 100 Shenzhen. million people. Shenzhen. Shenzhen is the city of Guangdong province. Right, All right, right. right. Guangdong province is the province behind Hong Kong. Hong Kong used to be part of Guangdong too, but of course Hong Kong became separate. Whole Guangdong province this they are they are production they have 100 million people 100 million not Shenzhen has about 10 million people so the Guangdong 100 million they account their their economy is bigger than the whole of russia that's how productive a lot of exports yeah they inherited all the hong kong's export industry hong kong no longer makes anything they give away all their manufacturing business to Guangdong. so a lot of stuff moving to india actually come from that province they are they are losing business to india and vietnam vietnam right right yeah. right right so another so, another one of his uh, uh lee she follow him again from Fukin to 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 beijing so everybody is very closely somebody closely trust never mind you don't have to need a brain he need a slave not a brain so this begs the question elmar when hu jintao decided to make a deal, he should be aware that everything that he is, except for his thoughts, that the other guy would know, but he would not know what the other guy is thinking. So in a, in a parallel dispensation, it would have been Li Keqiang as the general secretary and Wang Yang as the prime minister. As the, as the prime minister. And maybe yeah. uh, this guy, Wu, Wu, uh, the Wu that resigned, uh, right. uh, is supposed to be the, the next, lower, next position lower than the general secretary. And, and and glow him to be the next party secretary. So every thought the uh, uh, Wu Jintao was very happy that uh, it's going to be that way. And even Li Keqiang in the last two months has looked very very energetic, think he's going to take up the party secretary's position. But these guys were not real, real communists. Real communists have no heart. Right? You're not supposed to keep promises and not supposed to have a. a uh, to reward who the people who 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 have uh, put you in the in this business, real communism you only have party heart. You don't have a human heart. That is a communist. So where does China go from here? And um, by the way, viewers, if you have any questions of Elmer, you can say ask Elmer. This is a long session. I wanted it this way because. We, you know, you listen to one conversation, you kind of know what's going to happen in the next few months, at least, if not next few years. So where do where does the league group go from here? Hu Jintao is more or less discredited. Second is, you know, uh, Li Keqiang comes across as your, you know, professor uncle in the family. You know, everybody goes and sits in his lap. He gives you stories. He knows everything that's going on. But poor guy, he is now no longer, you know, currency. I mean, meaning like, you know, he has lost that chance. Who do you think the league is going to look around or coalesce around? And what do you think is going to be the move of Jiang Zeming, who's sitting in the Shanghai gang, sitting outside and watching all this? Take it away, sir. No, uh, I will tell you why I'm very happy. But th this is later. 
Let me tell yeah. you what he's going to do. Very much is in the position. You remember Hitler shut down the uh, parliament. You remember? Yes. Shut down yes. the parliament. This is what he intend to do. Everything belong to this war cabinet. These six people just show the pictures show will be a war cabinet. So externally, China is going to war. All right. And how are they going to war? We are going to say conventional weapons. They are really in no match with the NATO or even with Japan or Taiwan or US, right? In no match. So he is going to start. I have talked about the five nuclear axes. Yes. He is. It's this, already aired. Yeah. Yeah. I've already aired. I'd like to add something to that. I was not right. Before he used the nuclear threat, he is going to use bio weapon, hmm. which is similar to what we have experienced. The virus. The virus, there's no question, virus came from Wuhan, the city of Wuhan. Whether accidentally or deliberately, we, never, we will never know. But it was manufacturing in the P4 lab in Wuhan. P4 lab means the highest standard. Of course, it was designed by the French, but they never followed the procedure. So it could be accidentally leaked. But by developing one virus, they can also develop, they have actually developed more than 10 different viruses. So the first thing they're going to do is to go and spread virus, all right? Because virus, you cannot even identify or prove where the virus come from. If you start any nuclear weapon, do you make a little move? All the satellites are looking at you. All the drones are looking at you. So you can, they can identify. But if you have some, if you move some kind of uh, virus into a thermal thermal bottle and uh, leave it in uh, in uh, in somewhere in Europe or let's say in India or in Taiwan, there's no way to prove. So basically, they can use a virus to to confuse everybody, to really mess up the world economy again. Where we knew what happened in the last three years, right? And they're going to give you a different virus. It will take you one year at least to develop the vaccine, which is quite common. Even one year is very good, you know. Donald yeah, Trump yeah. Gives tremendous money. So while you are developing vaccine and you are you are dealing with the virus problems caused by the virus, China they use a very very um, primitive way of separating the people and continuous testing. They call zero tolerance. They send you to a um, to a quarantine hospital. Whenever there's a group, this building, if there are two or three, they send the whole building's people to another place for quarantine. This is the way you treat. Uh, uh, you know, remember you have a wine, uh, wine flu, a swine flu, swine flu, right? Swine right, flu. Right. This is how you treat. You destroy the whole 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 thing or something like this. This is the way that the communists are dealing. This is why even today. Basically, the whole world about this virus has been subsided, be, being being uh, being uh, recovered. But China is still exercising that. They call zero tolerance, and it's really uh, it's kind of choking their economy. But if you count the last three years, China has minimum loss from this from this uh, COVID. All right, and the world really suffered. Look at U.S. Uh, India. India finally woke up and then they just live with the virus. Uh, so that you return to normal very quickly. But you look at Europe, tremendous loss. Uh, I would easily say over $100 trillion loss worldwide. But China, actually their loss has only been recent. They have been shut down Shanghai for let's say two, three months and so on. Then And basically all the production still continue. All the exports still continue. In fact, their export rised. Until now, of course, this year you are you are taking away some of their business. So this their first weapon is not nuclear, will be virus. And when everybody's busy dealing with the virus, then they are going to give you the nuclear threat. This is we believe. I you know I I study a lot about such things. This is what they most likely would do. Please be careful. Don't let the Chinese any mainland Chinese come to your country traveling you, even i'm uh, um, from hong kong even hong kong mix up mixed with a lot of uh, communist chinese don't let them in you never know they would first if they 
it, they are going to be very aggressive. They want, they want to take over half of the world, the Asian bloc, the European bloc, and of course they already have the African bloc. This is what they want to do. Eventually, after a bio, bio attack, a strategic nuclear threat, they want to reach an agreement with the world. They control half the world, and then the rest of the world, you, you guys can have it. Meaning, I think I've already spoken from middle of Pacific, all the way to the English Channel, they want to control, and all the way down to the, down to, down to the Africa, the, the Cape of Good Hope. What about India? Watch me, they are going to do something. You better be prepared. Seriously, I'm not kidding. This is his dream. So originally, Putin would be the head of these three blocks. Now they've lost the war in, in Ukraine. They are on their knees. So Xi Jinping will never give us such a good opportunity to be the emperor of this. This is the dream of Alexander the Great, the dream of Napoleon, the dream of Hitler, the dream of Genghis Khan, a dream of Stalin, dream of Mao, and he he is that dream. He wants to he wants to be the head of this head of the world. And if they are that big, the next step is they want the whole world from half the world to the whole world. I, I'm not exaggerating. This is what they talk about. You go to talk about with these guys in Beijing. This is what they dream of. They feel that China, of course, once before was a very strong country. They want to return to that and do better than that. This is his dream. Well, um, that's a very chilling uh, wrap up on where things are headed. Lastly, what is going to happen? Uh, of to course, Shanghai? I don't believe. Of course, I don't believe he will succeed. I believe. I. I believe the free country. I believe in U.S. and so on. We will defeat them. So, but because he's doing this or attacking Taiwan and so on, U.S. have their solution. They will beat them up. And very quickly, within, I'm talking about one or two years, something will happen. And then the reason I'm happy is then we, Hong Kong, will have a chance of recovery. Yes, indeed. And, and we all are looking forward to that date when Hong Kong can again breathe free uh, democratically, of course. Last question before we uh, look to the questions from our viewers. What is going to happen of the Zhang Zeming or the Shanghai group now? What do you think they are going to try and do? They will have some kind of passive resistance within the coming five years before they hand over the government. Uh, we don't know. Xi Jinping will, will kill them at all costs because he has a bigger dream, much bigger than China. So I would say they will be wiped out. Hmm. Chilling. And that means that more people trying to leave the shores of China for uh, the West, probably, most likely even the United States. So I, that's, I, I uh, disagree with you. Sri, I disagree. Hong Kong, we still have freedom of travel, but Hong Kong has a lot of fortune, all right, money, mm. all right. They are going to shut down the entire Hong Kong, Shanghai, every every city. They're going to shut down and their entire border and then squeeze the money. They need the money to fight the war. Wow. Um, if you have any questions, we can take them up right now. There are a few. Let's go with the questions, please. Please. Sanat Kolhatkar wants to know, will Jung family keep silent too on Xi Jinping's, Xi Jinping's coronation, the way it happened? Oh, they will keep quiet, but it doesn't matter anymore. Xi Jinping allowed this uh, Wu Jintao's thing to happen in the eyes of the whole world. He doesn't yes. give a damn anymore. So he is going to use brute force and uh, basically arrest everybody who would not go with him. Hmm. Next question, please. Udit Joshi wants to know, is the present China president a duplicate? Is this a setup by the CCP leadership? The president is the uh, Xi Jinping will have three positions. Uh, party sec General party secretary, which he already is a seat. And then the head of the military, which he also, also basically has appointed him during this thing. And then after uh, next March, they will uh, ceremonially <laughs> have the have the parliament to elect the president and the prime minister. So officially next March. Right now, he's still the head of the state, like the president of China. 
because this his term, the government term, happens five years from five months from now, March next year. So he is the uh, so all these three is it belong to him, total control. So if there is going to be a resistance, how is that going to be coming? Let's take that question later. But my question: if there is going to be a resistance inside China, where passive. do you think it's going to come from? Passive. Passive resistance. Uh, Xi Jinping's people never control the money, the monetary, the economy, and and so on. So what they are going to do is they are going to. Uh, it's all controlled by the uh, the Jiang Group and also the Li Group. So they are going to uh, reluctantly or passively uh, uh, fight, not not openly. And in the end, Xi Jinping would use any means regardless of how the illegal and how cruel it is and just force them to obey but they it will it, it's going to happen in this coming five months of takeover and in the end he will win but the chinese economy hong kong economy will be totally ruined next question from priyadashi sharma how did opposition lose it after putting she under house arrest etc how did she get out of this drama by promising them everything <laughs> <laughs> and then run a gig on. And then in the end, the list is not the, the, the list. Make a new list and then we force everybody to vote and uh, zero objection. Pass that list. It's all his people. So, you know, people are sometimes so naive. They still believe when people promise something, they're going to do something. But this guy promised everything and does nothing. And... What is China's war roadmap? Who first? Taiwan or India? Oh, uh, India, I think, is indirect. Taiwan, of course, most important. His, uh, his, his, um, pro he promised to the Chinese people, you let me continue and I will unify China. Unify China means take over Taiwan. So this is him. He has to get the support of the Chinese people, even though they are very passive, but Taiwan to him is the most important. He will do, this is why the U.S., uh, I think uh, you've heard the U.S. Blinken, the uh, uh, Secretary of State, and also the head of the Pacific Fleet, the, the head of the Pacific Fleet said, the, uh, it the might fighting happen before can, the end of this year. Yeah. Even this yeah. year. Uh, they're not going to be 2027. Whoever think 2027, I always, I never thought that. They are going to attack you when you are least aware of so there will be an election in Taiwan in November. They may do it in November during the election. Well, um, if I remember correctly, Elmer, let's go to the next question. Just one second. I have, if I remember, uh, uh, just one second, please. If I remember correctly, Elmer, the United States for gain of function research, they funded close to 300 labs around the world. Let's say 20 of them are in China. I'm just giving a number, right? I agree. Now, I agree. Now, now, what I'm saying is the U.S. might have a plan to take out all these 20 labs in China in one shot. Because just to preempt what you just feared, that, you know, there is, if there's going to be another biological war, we need to make sure that these guys will not even think about it. Would that happen before China invades Taiwan or could happen even now, assuming there's strong intel? They may not attack Taiwan with conventional or nuclear weapons. They may attack Taiwan with a bio weapon, like a, a new a new a, a new virus first, and then Taiwan would be in total confusion, and then they threaten you with nuclear or even conventional metal. That's why I said I have to reverse what I said before. This is the cheapest and most effective, and you cannot have evidence of uh, attacking Taiwan. And they may do the same to India. You never know. But what I'm saying is, you guys remember gave China a lot of money to do the gain of function. They were they were explaining themselves the like a Fauci, you know. I give you the money so you can the virus you have gain of function. And the purpose of gain of function, this is their explanation, is to say we can develop vaccines that can kill the virus with the gain of function. But also the gain of function can also mean development for bioweapons. You can course, make it more, more uh, easy to spread and also more, uh, what do you call, more uh, more effective, meaning make you more sick. And yes. this is 
the U.S. didn't want to do it because U.S. had a lot of control. Humanitarian, one one uh, lab assistant can go to the Congress and uh, blow his whistle about how you are not doing it right. But by by outsourcing it to China, who's willing to do anything, then the uh, uh, it's, uh, it's cheaper, and they will say they will share the results. And these guys get kickbacks, let me tell you, like Fauci, all right? You give uh, 10 million to China, China give you one or two million kickbacks. These guys get kickbacks. They call it, oh, cold research, whatever you want to say. That's why Fauci never disclosed his personal asset. He's making money left and right on patents with U.S. company and then with China, everything. And he controls all the information. The thing about pharmaceutical, as you know, it's the know-how. It's the know-how. <laughs> Once you have know-how, you can do anything. I'm sure you, India has a very strong industry, but you are doing yes, mostly yes. generics. And uh, no, so, India, that, so anyway, India's this always, is very dangerous. India is always reacting, Elmer. That's one challenge that Terrible. India has. And it's you guys mindset. have the, This is the problem. We believe in copying, but we must invent. You absolutely have the brain to invent. Why use the brain to copy instead of inventing? <laughs> Very good question there. Next question, please. Mahip Tiwari wants to know, uh, in the last video, Pakistan has joined the Russia-Chinese nucleus nexus. Will the U.S. let Pakistan drift away, seeing recent U.S. warming up with IMF loan, jets maintenance, FATF list removal, considering U.S. and China's interests in Afghanistan? Mahip, you got to write a little bit better English. I'm just, I'm losing my la language skills reading your uh, <laughs> question. Sorry. Yeah. You understood uh, what he's Pakistan, trying to say, right? Pakistan has always been very tricky. Yeah. Both, you know, this this way with China and that way with the U.S. and uh, fighting with India. But the uh, U.S. easily, uh, there's a lot of corruption going on in Pakistan. And uh, and U.S. has been using Pakistan because they would be on the service. They were all, they're always accommodating. But in the bottom, you know, they hide with uh, uh, Bin, bin Laden in Pakistan, right next to a barrack. I mean, these guys are crooks, absolute crooks. So, uh, I, I mean, I know I have a few Indian friends like you, you know. I mean, I mean, you are smart, but you don't have that double face, triple face. You know, you deal very, yes. very hard. Yes, and then, yes. you know, because you're not a rich country, which I understand. But you are no crooks. These Pakistanis are crooks. Look how how they treated U.S. with the Bin Laden. Ah, oh, unbelievable. <laughs> All right. Next question: Will Hu Jintao be arrested? Rajesh Kumar Dubey wants to know. Yes, he's already arrested. He's already arrested. All right, and his family, his son is arrested, and his pictures. He remember he was hosting the Olympics, the 10, 2008 Olympics. All these pictures removed. Everything in the public view, his pictures already been removed in a matter of two, two and a half days. All his pictures been removed. So he will be considered as a traitor, as a traitor to the communists, to Xi Jinping. And everybody related to him, which means the leak, they will all have, they will have to really uh, 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 volunteer themselves. Oh, how I colluded with him. Please forgive me this and that. I was blinded. I was fooled. And this is going to affect because he controlled the, all the government officials. And all I would say half of the government officials will retire because of connection with him. Hmm. Scary. Uh, Harish Parigar wants to know, what is the way out for Chinese people then? Will civil disobedience, our own uh, leader Gandhi, show to British work in China? First, they have no weapons. Secondly, they have no guts. So <laughs> it's been going on for 70 years. They should have. They should have revolted a long time ago. All right. And, uh, and so China people con consider their own safety, their family safety, their job security. They control every part of your life. Look. You put the uh, WeChat into your phone, right? They listen to all your phone call, all your phone calls. They know where you are. They know what you buy, what who you pay, what you talk to, what message you send to. They control your life. That's why you will look at that scene when Wu Jingtao was removed. Look at all the other people, like uh, Li Keqing, stare in the front, wouldn't even look sideways. 
they know their life is in total control by the communists. You have no idea, India, even though you are not the, not the richest country in the world, but you have freedom. Uh, China's always asked me when, when the Chinese uh, communist uh, 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 members visited India and then they met with him. They keep saying, oh, India is not that great. They are not going to have a future and this, that. We are much better than them. The question I asked them, has anybody died from this uh, politics in India? China, total, 80 million people died. Abnormal died, deaths, great leap forward, cultural revolution, this and that. 80 million people died of abnormal. And East India, of course, they are not the most advanced country in the world, but nobody died. They have the freedom. At least they have the safety. They have a democracy. It may not be the best democracy. At least nobody died. Absolutely. And thank you so much, Elmer. This was a long session. Uh, I think, uh, well, the last question here. Sanat Kolhatkar, will something happen in the next four months till the new team takes over? Yeah, five months. This five months will be a huge, a huge amount of fight. Hong Kong stock market, as you know, we lost 6% in one day. All right, we are back to 1997. And uh, it's still coming down because all the U.S. money, the, the seven I, I bank, all right, in, uh, in Wall Street, all have agreed to pull back all their investment in China. And this is going to happen five months is long enough for them to pull out. And after, within this five months, I also see conflict with Taiwan. And if, if that happened, U.S. and China become enemy, enemy countries. All right. And when U.S. and China become enemy country, all the Hong Kong dollars will not be convertible, meaning all the Hong Kong assets uh, can only be converted into Hong Kong dollars and then to RMB. We will be linked to RMB instead of U.S. dollars. It's a big problem. And uh, also Taiwan, very dangerous. Uh, I mean, whether they use nuclear or, or bioweapon, bio Taiwan is in a very critical position. And, and don't prepare yourself, India, for such thing. It can happen all at the same time. The best strategy or tactic for them to fight is all five at the same time. So you wouldn't, the impact is so big that people will consider negotiating. Already in US, the Republicans don't think they should enter the war, all right? They want peace. So there was always, uh, in any country, there will be pro-war or pro-peace. The pro-peace may have an upper hand. Uh, if they attack all five, uh, using all the five in nuclear access stake, all at the same time. And if they give you enough impact, we may negotiate and allow them to have half the world. Oh, scary. Lajwanti Shahani, I figured there are a few more questions. Just, just humor me, Almar. Uh, Ukraine also has such bio labs. Is the US outsourcing bio warfare to China and Ukraine? Lajwanti, I told you there are 300 labs across the world. It's not just Ukraine and China. Everywhere in the world, there are labs. These are not subjected to US law so that they can do more than what they normally do in US to get gain of function. So go ahead, sir. Nuclear has both the bio lab and also nuclear. At, uh, during the USSR time, uh, Ukraine, as you know, have uh, several nuclear stations, right? Uh, Chernobyl. Yeah. Yes. And uh, so they have a lot of this uh, whatever nuclear waste they can uh, they can refine and repurpose make an atomic it, yeah. bomb easily. And that to really to make an atomic weapon is no longer rocket scientist. You give any country with scientists for one or two years, they can make it. And uh, so it's a very old technology. So don't. Don't believe that uh, Ukraine has nothing. Japan, let, let, let me tell you honestly, Japan is totally prepared. They have many nuclear stations, lots of nuclear waste. They've been refining. In less than a few weeks, they can put together an atomic warhead. Same thing with Taiwan. And all these countries are doing it secretly, like Israel. All right? This is way up. So it's not going to, they are not going to lie down and just let you attack. They have all the ability to counterattack. Karan wants to know, will the Quad be strengthened? Will we get, will India get a UN permanent seat in the United Nations Security Council? I'm very disappointed with India, to be honest with you. You really have to create a very strong bond with United States and Japan. Japan, of course, the Prime Minister came to India and visit, but it's not good enough. Um, 
of course you made some good money by buying Indian oil and so on and so forth. But you have to be very strong. Your your military weapons tie with the with the with the Russia, and also you you this kind of trading, and then you also belong to the uh, belong to the what do you call the um, uh, the blocks, right? The the the, yeah, the, quad, the four countries, quad. not the court, but the uh, the um, it's called the uh, bricks, uh, bricks, bricks, bricks. You belong yeah. to bricks. It's a problem. You think you are siding with both ways. You have to cut the ties with them. These are losers. Don't side with losers. We've been saying this for a long time and we've been catching a lot of flag, but that's all right. That's what we say. We don't expect, you know, brownie points. We want to tell you the truth the way we see it. Next question from Arun Rajshekar. Uh, will there be any coup in China in the near future? Coup? What do you mean by coup? A coup. Uh, coup, uh, coup. There could be. There could very well be. Because they all double face. They have double face. While the military say yes to him, they may turn around. Um, I also a little bit worry about China. If their economy deteriorates, they may enter a civil war. There are five military regions, uh, the four directions, east, uh, south, north, west, and central. There are five military. And if they don't get paid properly, if Chinese economy continue to, to deteriorate, and if these soldiers don't get paid, they may just uh, become warlords, and there are going to be civil wars. And uh, this may happen anytime. may not be even a coup. The economy is so bad. It's so bad. And uh, 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 I would say any of these military uh, uh, re uh, region can become, uh, can start a coup easily. So um, that's about it. That's it for us for today. Thank you so much, Elmer. Oh, I think we have, covered, yeah, we have covered almost all the stuff. And here's a sincere request to all of you friends. Please share this video. You may not agree with everything that we have said here, but I have not seen a more clearer explanation of the three minutes that took place, just that three minutes, because the world saw something there. But how Elmer has connected the dots, that's how I look at it. It's something that everybody thinks should think about this. And, and this is this is not easy. This is a difficult situation. And, and India being an unfortunate neighbor needs to brace itself, I guess. But thanks once again, Elmer. It was a wonderful conversation we had today. I mean, uh, we, we've I, kind I of- My pleasure with some very intelligent questions. And I hope to do it again soon. Very, very soon, sir. And thank you so much. Namaskar. Thank you, Sri. Bye-bye.